What's going on there, folks? Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, actually, here along the West Coast. It is the uh, Earthmaster here on this TGIF. Friday, finally. About 12, 12 p.m. here, August 4th, 2023. Latest earthquake activity. Looks like a 3.6 here across the area of eastern Afghanistan. Let's go ahead and check out Southern California first. We did see some activity down here across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Notice a couple red circles here indicating some recent earthquake activity. Also, did see a 3.0 earthquake just off the San Andreas Fault earlier this morning, about 8 o'clock or so local time. Uh, so we're noticing a little bit of uptick here across this region. We'll keep a close eye on it. There's no major swarming, but as always, any activity right there on the San Andreas Fault specifically is something to keep an eye on. Up into the Central California area, a little bit of movement outside of the Long Valley Supervolcano near Tom's Place, 3.0. Uh, and also some movement here across the Creeping Segment that is indeed called the Creeping Section of the San Andreas Fault, south of the Bay. Mostly smaller microquakes across that area. Northern California, a little spotty up here. Uh, we did see some movement yesterday near the Fall River Mills area. This is well southeast of Mount Shasta, north of Bernie. A couple smaller quakes and uh, one earthquake over here around the Cascadia subduction zone just south of Eureka. That was a 2.1, 19 kilometers deep. We'll continue to keep an eye on this area though because it does uh, tend to pick up in terms of the multitude of quakes following activity out here across these fracture zones. And uh, that's what we've been seeing, a little bit of activity out here across the Blanco fracture zone here recently. 3.3 from yesterday and also a 2.5, but an overall trend over the last week of uptick. A little spotty activity throughout the Pacific Northwest, nothing major going on. Same with the Yellowstone area and Montana. Uh, out in Texas, did see a three-pointer coming in here just within the last hour, a couple hours. 3.4. That's outside of the Pecos, Texas area. Look at the satellite map here, though. Uh, will show us kind of what's out there. And, uh, well, from space, you would think there's just a whole bunch of desert out there, right? Nothing, at least as far as the vegetation, hasn't greened up out here on this satellite imagery. But uh, closer inspection does show quite a bit of oil pumping operations out here and wastewater disposal ponds. Those are not campsites with their own little swimming pool built in. Those are indeed um, wastewater disposal ponds. And there's a whole process involved out here. Not going to get into it, but uh, it does definitely involves earthquake activity. This is a, a hot spot in terms of uh, earthquake activity. And let me show the last 30 days of movement here. And we can go back months prior to this, and you'll see this whole area basically filled in. Uh, but this is just this local area here outside of Pecos around the oil fields. 119 earthquakes in the last 30 days of various magnitudes. So continue to watch out there for some movement. Uh, one earthquake outside of Amarillo, actually a couple up here. Now it's been a little while since I've seen any movement here, specifically around the Amarillo area, uh, just north of um, Highway 60 it looks like. I'm kind of curious, let's take, let's take a look, see what we got out here. Um. <clears throat> Okay, a little bit closer inspection here. I do see what looks like some ponds out here. They're perfectly squared up. I don't know if this is for maybe the agriculture set up out here or not. Um, but those ponds look a little on the, uh, the odd side. They look like wastewater disposal ponds, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, far as oil fields go out here, it's hard to say. Uh, maybe there were some older ones at some time. Uh, sometimes it does take months, if not years, for earthquake activity to show up here across these regions. But uh, we'll watch that. We'll check on that a little bit later, see if this picks back up in terms of the multitude of quakes. Rest of the country, a little spotty out there. Not too much going on. One earthquake out in Kentucky, Lancaster area. 2.6, 17 kilometers deep, about 2 o'clock this morning local time here. All right, South America region, we got a couple earthquakes there in the uh, 4 range from last night. Also did see a 5.1 down here into the Peru Chile Trench um, earlier this morning, about 5 o'clock or so. Well, USGS reporting that as a 4.8. 165 kilometers deep there for that earthquake there into the uh, Peru Chile Trench. 
Uh, the rest of the world, let's see what we have going on here. Alaska movement, getting further activity up here across Alaska following that five pointer. There's a five pointer from yesterday. Um, looks like it's tapered off slightly, although still seeing some, uh, looks like aftershock activity within the vicinity of that five pointer from yesterday. So we continue to watch that uh, for some potential movement. It's been quite active up here along the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire, the northern end, northern edge, so to speak. Uh, some movement out west of the Big Island earlier this morning, a 3.9, 43 kilometers deep. Now, whenever we see these deeper earthquakes around the island, uh, the USGS and, and most people agree that's just due to the weight of the Hawaii Islands on the Pacific Plate, out here in the middle of the Pacific Plate, uh, 43 kilometers or so. They call it kind of bending uh, or warping of the plate out here, and you get these earthquakes taking place across the islands. Uh, far as the, uh, the uh, volcanoes go, we got one earthquake up here across Mauna Loa, 1.7. Uh, coming in within the last hour but generally light activity here across the big island today uh, the rest of the globe rest of the flat scale model earth or the globe whichever you prefer uh, shows a cluster of activity once again across the indonesia islands area and some movement around taiwan it looks like did see some activity here in the upper four range 4.9 the largest in this cluster of earthquake activity about five o'clock this morning uh, so continue to watch that and of course very active across the areas of the Indonesia Islands region with that clustering going on of twos and threes and fours. Not a whole lot of activity across the Java Trench today. It looks like a little minor movement here uh, near Sumatra but for the most part looks like today is going to be a, a cluster across this area of the uh, western Filipino plate here and the Indonesia Islands region. Activity there across Afghanistan. Let's see what we got going on here. Looks like a four pointer, 4.4 to be exact, 37 kilometers deep here, eastern Afghanistan. Uh, the rest of the area here, a little bit of further movement down near the Red Sea from yesterday. That was a 4.4. And doesn't look like we've seen anything else overnight here. Uh, a little bit of movement up into the uh, Turkey area. And a 3.5 in. Uh, let's see exactly where that's at. Let me double check here on the EMSC model. See what uh, we got. Let's go to the world map here from the European model. <clears throat> I wanted to say it's up there around uh, Germany area, but I want to be specific. Uh, close, very close. Poland, Western Poland area, 3.5 uh, coming in earlier today, it looks like. All right, the rest of the uh, model Earth here, a little bit of movement north of the uh, Iceland area. A couple uh, looks like a 4.1 and a 2.5, a little bit of movement across the Azores as well. But for the most part, the Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet far as the divergent boundaries go. And uh, let's see what else we have here. I think that's about it far as earthquake movement goes. Uh, New Zealand, uh, let's see, I see a newer ring down there, so. Uh, let's go over here to the uh, GeoNet server. Stand by here for a second while I pull that up. And we'll check out the New Zealand earthquake activity. 2.9 here near the, um, off the north coast it looks like. Just off the north coast. Um, 24 kilometers deep six hours ago. 2.0 as well. Near Taupo super volcano. Uh, let me pull up the earthquake drums and see what we have going on around the North Island area. <clears throat> doesn't look like too much activity um, stirring up just some smaller quake activity in the last couple hours there's some from last night down around the Jackson Bay South Island area uh, but for the most part I'm not really seeing anything major going on here all right space weather activity we have anything major going on across the space weather world well uh, this is most recent update uh, looks like uh, we've leveled out here slightly across the X-ray flux chart. We're just crackling with some sea flare activity with uh, that M flare from yesterday. Starting to rise up here slightly. Um, that is probably coming from a sunspot. Uh, let's take a look here and see what we got. Well, I, I believe that's 3380 still out there on the southwestern, uh, southwestern limb of the sun. 
That uh, sunspot still very active, but no longer directly in view, although we're seeing some of the, uh, the uh, flaring take place well above the sunspot level. We're left with a whole bunch of sunspots. Noteworthy, I believe, to watch these that are coming around the eastern limb of the sun. We'll check out the magnetogram image here of the complexity of the sunspots. 3380 again is way out of view, out of sight, out of mind. But look how fast this one grew overnight. This one's looking very complex. We'll continue to watch this area. Although that is uh, going to be off here on the western limb as well. Soon to, uh, soon to be out of sight, out of mind along with 3380. Uh, these sunspot regions here, uh, maybe a little bit of growth here within the center one it looks like. A couple areas of complex structure. And these newer sunspots... We'll continue to watch these. I don't know if these are in the developing stage or uh, the dying stage. Either way, uh, a little bit of complex structure within a couple of these that are coming around the bend. We'll continue to watch that, though, for some uh, development. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare probability. M flare at 55. X flare around the 10% uh, probability. Uh, let's see, no major auroras forecasted. Looks like we're having a little bit of amplified conditions here. I think they were calling a G1 class storm today uh, around the 1800 to 24 time period. And right now UTC time is at about 1922. So that would put it uh, roughly within this area. But it doesn't look like we're seeing anything, uh, well, at least for now, it looks like around the KP index of three, maybe three. Uh, but I don't expect anything major to kick up here. A little bit further amplification across the southern polar region uh, in Antarctica. If anybody's out there and you got a clear sky, well, you might see some, uh, some awesome lights above your head. But uh, out here, northern hemisphere, not a whole lot going on there just due to the sun still being out, still being light out. Uh, looks like Kevin updated the sunspot number progression map here. This is the predicted sunspot number uh, for solar cycle 25 maximum. Uh, this was from the Space Weather Prediction Center. Notice that we are still way above this predicted line far as the number of sunspots. Uh, also, the solar flux progression chart, we are way above as well. The energy, so to speak, of the suns uh, or of the uh, <laughs> sunspots. Excuse me, I imagine having multiple suns in the sky. That'd be crazy. But uh, yeah, these are the, uh, the energy, so to speak, and the number of sunspots out there uh, producing energy on the sun's uh, surface, so to speak. But we're way above that, this line again, uh, similar to what we're seeing here with the uh, sunspot number forecasted prediction, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, area. So we'll continue to watch this as we advance towards solar cycle 25, which will take place in the summer of 2025, roughly June, I believe. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. Either way, I think we're, you know, we're getting active. We've been pretty lucky, though, far as having any, um, you know, major Earth-directed CMEs. Um, you know, there was one earlier this year, this year that brought down... Uh, some auroras into northern Texas. I think even down into southern California were visible once you get outside the city lights and away from the light pollution. But yeah, I I didn't see any. I was out there that night. Uh, just didn't have a clear enough view of the northern horizon there. Hoping for a nice event. That way we can get some cool shots out here of the auroras because I think everyone would love to see the auroras at least once in their lifetime. Storm Prediction Center, far as weather here on Earth goes, uh, looks like a slight risk for severe weather across portions of the plains and over here around Illinois. Uh, tornado potential sits within the Illinois area, or uh, excuse me, Missouri area. I'm way off here. <laughs> Where am I? All right, uh, looks like Columbia, Blue Springs, uh, these areas are in a 5% chance for tornado probability today and it's positioned mostly right over Missouri. Uh, with a 2% surrounding that 5% area. So if you're within this zone, uh, keep your eye on the sky today for that probability of tornadoes. Uh, also got some hail and wind threats, but it looks like for now uh, a toss-up between tornado and wind. Uh, so just stay weather aware out there. Keep your weather radio on and um, yeah, just be on guard.
Day four does show a little bit of severe weather uh, outbreak potentially, as you can see across areas of Ohio, uh, DC region as well. We'll keep a we'll watch this a little bit uh, later as we get closer to this time period, which is going to be on Monday, Monday into Tuesday. Uh, aside from that, that should be about it. Uh, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. I don't think we got anything major going on here across Yellowstone. Uh, a handful of smaller quakes here in Wyoming. Notice this earthquake activity here. If you're wondering why I skipped this, this is just an error. This station always goes into error mode. This is not, you know, any type of magma. This is not um, um, geysers. This is not anything. This is just other. This is just basically a station that they probably need to get rid of or update you know get this thing fixed because if you think about it if this was magma movement or any other type of volcanic activity that would be showing up across the entire area of the park uh, even local stations are not picking up so uh, it's going to be the borehole station here and any other station it's just not picking it up so ignore this uh, mammoth vault uh, seismograph station there all right, folks, have a good one. Stay safe. Um, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening with the update video here on this Friday night. I may break out the barbecue and see how it goes this uh, this weekend, but I don't know. I'm kind of barbecued out because I cooked up a huge brisket here um, a weekend or two ago, and it lasted us for about five nights. So I'm a little bit on the burnt outside in terms of barbecuing, but uh, I'll barbecue up some chicken. That sounds kind of good. We'll catch you guys back here later tonight with the Friday night update. Take care, everyone.